Hi, Doug McLennan here at the uh, 2013 Ojai Music Festival, and uh, it's Sunday afternoon. We're in the home stretch, and we've just finished the first half of uh, the 11 a.m. concert. And joining me uh, right now is uh, Christopher Haley, who's the program annotator for uh, the the music festival, long time at that, and a lecturer at Princeton, a music historian. That's Welcome. right. Yes, thank you, Doug. It's great to be here, and I think this is a wonderful, uh, wonderful addition to the program to have these streamed live uh, around the world. Let's hope, and uh, it's great honor to be be with you. Well, I'm glad that you're here. So. Uh, Aside from Tom Morris and Mark Morris, um, you have probably spent more time uh, looking at all of the threads uh, between all of these pieces and, um, and then in addition, uh, throughout the week, talking with artists and with Mark and, and whatever. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how this all sort of... Yeah pulls together in a programmatic kind of way. Well, no, no sooner is this festival over than we begin, I begin to think about the next festival because some of the pieces will already be in place. Right. And as the summer and the fall go by, more and more pieces arrive in one form or another. So I, I begin thinking about how these pieces work together. I have the opportunity to, to talk with the music director and with Tom, but mainly I like to dig very deeply into both the, the works themselves and the composers and tease out some of those threads. This year was a wonderful example because we have composers who work so well together, having known each other, worked with each other, and music which shares uh, so much in common. So, so and a lot of my work was actually done by what I was given. But that, that continues then, and uh, by January and February I begin writing, and I, the deadline seems to get earlier and earlier every year, but around March uh, then the program is set and my notes are pretty much written. So, so this festival is kind of built around this idea of playing with community of, mm -hmm. of, of music and, um, you know, even in the structure of the concerts, even in the structure of the pieces, mm -hmm. you have a, a set of composers who, who spent a lot of their careers kind of uh, uh, challenging mm -hmm. the, the conventional notions of the time um, and who were not some of them, you know, in the current uh, uh, thinking of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that uh, many of these composers were not what you would call successful in, in their time. Uh, Ives, of course, was wealthy from another source, insurance. But, but the others really had found a kind of calling, a, uh, a mission that they pursued doggedly throughout the decades with success, without success, but with a kind of individuality that is wonderfully uh, inspiring. And I, I think you see the, the nature of that inspiration in John Luther Adams, who, who sees someone like uh, Harrison and says, yes, it can be done, and he pursues then his own path. So I think that's another of the threads in this, is that kind of believe in yourself and go where it takes you, and that's part of the excitement of what we've heard over this weekend. And they're, they're also actually very direct threads. Yes. Um, uh, you know, Lou Harrison conducted uh, Ives, uh, the premiere of Ives. Uh, third, was it third, third Symphony, Symphony yes. Um, and Henry Cowell was teacher of, mm -hmm. you know. Of Harrison. You know, that's partly what happens when like minds meet each other. They recognize, they recognize and respect that kind of integrity. And so I, I think uh, the other thing that we have to recognize is that these were extraordinarily generous people. Cowell and Harrison in particular had this expansive embrace of ideas, of cultures, and of young people coming up. And that's, that's one of the things that we heard about from John Luther Adams, that this is in fact a community that's built by a kind of mutual recognition. And uh, we have uh, good examples of that, for instance, in last night's For Lou Harrison, a tribute to his mentor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do, you, do you hear traces of Cowell in, say, John Luther Adams? or? Uh... You know, that's an interesting question, and I think that, uh, for instance, some of the things that, that Ives or Cowell did, some of the 
frontiers that they opened up, permit things that then others will follow. But I don't hear a stylistic um, similarity. I think the individuality of these composers is strong enough that they really are going to um, go their own paths, albeit with a kind of joyous eclecticism. They will pull from this source and that source. But it would be hard, I think, to come up with something that sort of defines a Cowell style or a Harrison style, um, and that's part of the wonder of it. It's, it's really this openness to constant exploration. We, we have in this next half coming up um, a song by William Bolcom, who I actually kind of associate with this, this kind of aesthetic of, of you know, that we've been listening to all of this. And I think so. I think uh, composers like Bolcom are, uh, are of a generation and, and, and those after uh, in which those barriers were broken. Um, certainly, they were well versed in the avant-garde, uh, those barriers broken at the beginning of the century in Vienna and Berlin and Paris, but at the same time open to this rich American vernacular. And I, that, of course, William Bolcom is, is a supreme master. master right. And I, I think that's partly what we celebrate in a festival like this, is this ability to have music that reflects the way we live our lives. Our lives are, are not compartmentalized. We, we don't cut off this music from that. And there's a wonderful opportunity when a composer is as, as fertilely imaginative as these are to sort of say, well, let's, let's have that reflected in our concert music as well. There's also a piece by Vincent Persichetti on here, yes. which, which I don't hear as mm -hmm. much. That that um, that somehow doesn't seem to fit with all of these. Well, others. we have, you know, the fact is we're having organ. I think probably for the first time at Ojai, an organ <laughs> recital um, made possible by the wonders of digital uh, organs these days, and so we are hearing a couple of things there that are a little out of the out of the mainstream of what this mainstream is in the Ojai Festival. So. Percy Ketty is a, is a wonderful teacher, and a, likewise, though his own music might seem more, uh, more mainstream, he was open as a teacher to all sorts of ideas and encouraged his students. And I'm glad uh, through this piece there will be a tribute to that spirit as well. Right, right. Well, well thank you. We're, we're being called back to mm -hmm. uh, the second half, and um, which starts with this um, kind of face-melting um, <laughs> yes. version that, uh, of, of America, um, a tribute to America Ives. by, by Ives, yes. Um, yes. which is the, the, one of the really peculiar pieces. Um, oh, it's a terrific piece, and we'll, we'll have great fun. And then a little benediction by Carl Ruggles. That will end the concert with a wonderful, wonderful sense. So okay. thank you so much. Well, thanks, thanks Chris. Yeah. Nice, to, nice to see you. And uh, join us in just a couple of minutes, and we'll be back with the second half.